No. Why? Okay. Thank you for joining us again for another Mitchell's Minutes. Uh, here we are, uh, and it's nighttime, and it's time to get ready to pray with the girls for bed. <clears throat> Typically what we do here in the Mitchell household is Mama does paperwork at night, and I often put the boys and the girls down. So anyways, so here I am, and I am going to read to them the chapter of Peter chapter 2, because we're working on 1 Peter, the book, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. So tonight, I am going to, oh, that's gross. It's a real life here. This is not staged at all. Don't pick your nose. That's yucky, yucky, yucky. Um, we're going to read chapter 2. <clears throat> Just like last time, I'm mostly going to read, but I may share some stuff and uh, talk to the girls specifically, but I don't want uh, anybody to be videotaping the girls for sake of anonymity. You know what I mean? Okay, so again, we're reading out of the EOB, which in um, the big terms is the Eastern Greek Orthodox New Testament because I think it's the best New Testament translation for us in our English vernacular. So here we go. Therefore, putting away all wickedness, deceit, hypocrisies, envies, and all every, excuse me, and all evil speaking. That's just really good. Let me read it again. Therefore, putting away all, e all wickedness, deceit, hypocrisy, envies, and all evil speaking. Just imagine if you did that in your life. If you put away all wickedness, all deceit, that means you don't lie. You don't stretch the truth. You don't tell a story spinning it so somebody perceives something that way even though this is really what happened. People do that all the time. Uh, you're totally real. There's no guile in your life. You're not a hypocrite. Don't pick your nose. That's gross. If you need a Kleenex, just tell me. Can Autumn, will you go get me a Kleenex? Bye. And And you get rid of all envies in your life. Oh, and also, yeah, that'd be great. And all evil speakings. As newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that you may grow by it in salvation. See, because salvation is not like something that you get. You don't just like pray some prayer and then get saved. You are saved from unrighteousness. You're saved to righteousness. You're saved from this world, but you are working out. Hold on, hold on. Here comes the toilet paper. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Baby blow. Baby. Whoa, boy. Wow, okay. That's good. Hold on. That's good. I think we got it. Okay, good job. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, come to him who is a living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood in the, or in the order of to offer up, in order to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. Do not pick your nose. Okay. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, in order to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Anya, hold, hold your hand. As the scripture has said, it has, has it. Verse 6. As the scriptures has, has it, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, chosen 
and precious, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Verse 7, the, that end of that quote. For you who believe, this brings honor. But for those who are disobedient, quote, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, end quote, and, quote, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Indeed, end quote, indeed, they stumbled at the word and are disobedient, which is what they were laid aside for. They were laid aside for being disobedient. It's referring to Israel. Um, specifically like the children of Israel uh, coming out of the wilderness. That's what the Hebrew writer talked about. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the wonderful deeds of him who called you. Do you want to go somewhere? Where? You could just sit here or lay down. You want to lay down? Hmm? Okay. So, here's what we are. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the wonderful deeds of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. In the past, you were not a people, but you are God's people. In the past, you had not obtained mercy, but now you have, attained, have, have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as exiles and pilgrims to abstain from carnal lusts, which war against the soul. Live righteous lives among the nations, so that if people accurse, accurse you of being evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they see, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, for the Lord's sake, submit yourself to every human institution, to the emperor as supreme, to the governors as commissioned by him to punish those who do evil, and to praise those who do good. For this... For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should silence the ignorance of those who are foolish. Be free, but do not use your freedom as a cloak for wickedness, but rather as a bondservant of God. You want to lay down? No. Okay. Okay. Verse 17. You want, you want me to hold you the other way? Verse 17, honor everyone, love the brethren, fear God, honor the king. Slaves or employees, be in subjection to your masters with full reverence, not only to do the good, not only to the good and kind, but also to the wicked. Truly it is worthy of praise if someone endures pain and suffering unjustly because of conscience towards God. But what glory is there if someone, if when you sin, you patiently endure it? However, if you patiently endure suffering, it's like a little, a little cat snuggle in. Just stay still. However, if you patiently endure suffering when you do good, this is worthy of praise with God. You were called to this because Christ also suffered for us, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. Yet he did not sin, neither was there deceit found in his mouth. And when he was cursed, he did not curse back. When he suffered, he did not threaten but committed himself to the one who judges righteously. 
in his body he bore in himself our sins on the tree, so that having died to sins, we might live to righteousness, and by his wounds you are healed. Indeed, you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is a really good chapter. It's especially good for children and people um, who justify themselves. Listen to this passage. He says this. Truly, it is worthy of praise if someone endures pain and suffering unjustly because of their conscience towards God. So let's say you're doing what's right and you get punished. So Jesus says to love your enemies so you decide not to go to war. Or you explain this, and people make fun of you, or they abuse you, or even you go to jail because you won't fight in war. This happened in World War I. Many people who were um, convinced of Jesus' teachings went to jail and suffered much great things. And, and Paul says, this is very good. This is, this is worthy of praise, even. But then he says, but what glory is there if when you sin, let's say, you steal, or you lie, or you're a hypocrite, or something. Um, and then you're caught, and you patiently endure the beating. Okay, so you, we don't get beat in this country for doing wrong. But let's say you're a child. So often... You can see the child, so the child does something, they steal something, or they lie. And then they get caught, and the parent says, child, why did you do this? And they look, and then, so like in this instance, he's saying, okay, so in the instance that Peter's talking about, this guy gets caught, and then he's like, yeah, I did what was wrong. And he gets it, and he takes it, and he takes his beating or whatever, and he's just like, oh, that's the way it is, I did what was wrong. And he's like, that is not praiseworthy. So don't think you're doing good because you just are getting what you deserve. You know, some people think like, well, I didn't throw a fit. But here's the problem that most people, when they get caught and then they get punished, they go and they go and justify themselves. Oh, it was because of this or my parents messed me up. Or um, if my brother hadn't have done this and I wouldn't have done that and so on and so forth. And they go and they eventually... I blame everybody. Or they get caught and they confess to knowing what they do, but they're just so mad at their parents. Or, you know what I mean? Can you relate to that? Um, and this often happens. But it, it's, what's a sad thing is it's pretty understandable for children, but this happens way too often with adults. And I hope, I hope you're not there. And I hope that you would be found worthy to suffer for the glorious King of Kings, and that you take it patiently. That's praiseworthy. But please do not be found to be one of those who does something wrong and then is caught. And if you do do something wrong, I hope you do take it patiently. But it's not praiseworthy. You shouldn't have done it. what was wrong in the first place. But for sure, don't be the one who does what's wrong. I'm up here on you. And then, and then throws a bad fit. I mean, this is really bad. Um... Anyways, praise be to God, who died for our sins. He was wounded, and you were healed. Indeed, we were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. Praise God. Well, may the reading of his word bless you. May he keep you, and may he shine his countenance upon you. Um, anyways, thanks again for joining us for the reading of the word of God. Coming to another Mitchell's Minutes, we pray that the Word of God will bless you. And remember, the way is narrow and difficult. That leads to life, and only few find it. I hope you can find it. This is Steve Mitchell saying goodbye. God bless you.